Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he's worthy to be praised, right? God is good and he is worthy to be praised. And I'm telling you, man, we need to just rejoice and be grateful that we are alive today. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to, we've been talking about the power of, of, uh, vulnerability. We've been talking about the power of, uh, of, uh, gratitude and today. We're going to talk about the power of joy. So, uh, get yourselves ready, set that thermostat today. All is well with us in Jesus name. And, uh, I just think the best is yet to come in your life. The best is yet to come in, in my life. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Good day. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, as uh, Melchizedek said about Abraham in the book of Genesis, he says, I'll, I'll bless you by saying. And uh, I want to do that this morning. I want to bless you by saying that you're blessed. Uh, I'll bless you by saying that you are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we send out prayers for everybody that's going through any type of physical uh issue uh maybe you're in the hospital maybe you're going through treatment we pray for the treatment we pray for the the doctors we pray for the wisdom that god will give you and and uh i just uh thank god that we live in the dimension and the realm of the finished your healing is finished praise god so you lay hold of it don't you ever belittle your faith you have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that. Amen. Well, praise God. Let's see where you guys are from this morning. We are sending blessings to Taiwan this morning. Welcome to the Grace Game. We are saying to you in Jesus' name that you are blessed and highly favored. Praise God. And uh, we think that God is good. Amen. Sulfic, 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 excuse me, Virginia in the house this morning um yeah we thank god for all those healings taking place today woodland hills california vancouver washington in the house today in jesus name uh yeah i've been preaching on faith for the last three weeks just get in there and get those bad get those um backlogs and and get a hold of them praise god lathonia georgia chicago Tulsa in the house. We welcome you to the Grace Gang. We say you're blessed today. We say you're blessed today. South Africa, Jacksonville, Florida, Omaha, Nebraska, Norfolk, Virginia, Atlanta is in the house. Burlington, North Carolina, Zachary, Louisiana. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. It's afternoon in South Africa. Welcome to the Grace Gang, Baltimore. We welcome you, send blessings to you guys today by saying Buffalo is in the house. We bless you. Houston, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Kapala, Uganda is in the house again this morning. Uh, Jersey, Mobile, Alabama. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Um, Kansas City, Missouri, McDonough, Georgia. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Seattle, Washington. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada is in the house with us this morning. We send blessings to you guys today. Fayetteville, Georgia, uh, Beaumont, Texas. God bless you in Miami, Ventura, Michigan, uh, World Changes Church, Orlando. I think I saw in the house today. OKC is with us this morning. Richmond, Virginia, Cincinnati, Ohio. Dominican Republic is here with us this morning. Praise God. We pray for Puerto Rico and anybody in the path of that storm that God preserve you and keep you. Uh, Pearl Harbor uh, is in the house. St. Louis, Missouri, Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Maryland is in the house this morning. And uh, we just thank God. Memphis, Tennessee in the house. Stockbridge is here. Toronto is here. Union City, Georgia is here. Uh, Griffin, Georgia is here. New York State is here. And we say you are blessed today. We welcome you to the Grace Gang. Colorado, USA, 
Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania. Georgia's in the house real good. Uh, Edmonton, I think, uh, Edinburgh, Scot Scotland is in the house. Greece is in the house. We welcome you to the Grace Gang this morning. Detroit, Michigan in the house. Um, we welcome you this morning to the Grace Gang. All is well. Chicago, Nairobi is in the house this morning in Kenya. We are blessed today. The Navajo Reservation is joining us today. Alaska is in the house today. Praise God. All is well. We're praying for mercy and grace for your daughter. South Fulton, Georgia. See the South Fulton in the house today. And uh, San Jose, uh, Syria is in the house today. And uh, we, we send blessings to Syria. We send blessings to the Netherlands. They're joining us today. Dallas, Texas is in the house this morning. San Diego is in the house this morning. Arkansas uh, in the house. Baton Rouge is in the house this morning. We send blessings to all of you guys. We say you're blessed in Jesus' name. South Bend, we say you're blessed in Jesus' name. Colombia, you are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We send that blessing out to you right now. We bless you by saying you're blessed. Amen. Lagos, Nigeria is in the house this morning. God bless you guys. Uh, Lawrenceville, Florida is in the house. Is, uh, Saudi Arabia is in the house with us this morning. We send blessings out to you and we say that you are blessed, 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 blessed uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, man. I tell you. Your day is blessed. Your life is blessed. Your relationships are blessed in Jesus' name. And welcome. Welcome this morning to the Grace Gang where we are talking about joy. Zimbabwe is uh, in the house with us today. Welcome to the Grace Gang. God bless you. And I thank God that uh, the Grace Gang is getting larger and larger and, and spreading the gospel, this gospel of grace around the world, India is in the house with us this morning. Berkeley, California in the house with us, praise God. And all is well in your life today, in your city. All is well. Whatever's wrong, God's gonna make it right. Nambia is in the house with us today. You hear me? Whatever's wrong, God's gonna make it right. You hold on to that. Whatever's wrong, God's gonna make it right. Ghana is in the house with us. Joplin is in the house with us joining the grace gang this morning god bless you guys man all is well all is well you hear me i'm i'm, I'm that's a blessing blessings over you in america's georgia all is well with you and your house receive that in jesus name all is well with you and your house receive that in jesus name praise the lord praise the lord God is so good, right? God is so good. Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we just we just we just have to pause and just think of his goodness, man. Think of all the things that he's done for us. And and uh, it's just amazing. So we welcome you, uh, all of you who have joined us, whether it's the morning or the afternoon. We are celebrating the goodness of our Lord God. Amen. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. Repeat after me and mean it with your heart. Ready? I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's, God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. 
because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to, to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. I declare now that all is well with me and my house in Jesus mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. I'm sure you've heard this amazing scripture in the book of Nehemiah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, I want you to be strong today. And if you're going to be strong today, we at least got to pay attention to what he's saying here. Uh, the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah chapter 8, I believe, is my strength. So we got to really understand what joy is all about. And and what happens when when joy shows up and not to be afraid when uh, temptations show up because we have a weapon called joy and the weapon of joy can be our strength. So let's go to James and let's work on a a really good Bible definition for joy, because I'm sure when most people when most people hear joy, they think um, happiness and I believe happiness can be a result of joy, but happiness is based on your comfort. You know, maybe if you're not comfortable, you may not be emotionally happy. But I think joy is a lot deeper than that. Joy is a spiritual force. And, and you hang around it long enough, it'll make you happy. So let's let's get a definition here for, for the joy of, uh, of God. Uh, verse uh, James chapter 1. And verse two through four, James chapter one, verse two through four, he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, tests or trials. Um, he says, consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped or encounter trials or any sort of fall into various temptations. So basically what he says, when you fall into trouble, okay, count it all joy. When do you count it all joy? When you fall into different temptations, tests, and trials. Now, most people, when they fall into a financial problem or a bad uh, diagnosis, we don't, we don't count it joy. We count it worry. We count it, I'm feeling some kind of way. We count it, well, you know, we start questioning God's character. You know, where are you, God? How can you let this happen to me? And so forth and so on, right? But it's amazing to me that God said in the midst of tribulation, what you need to get is joy. Your weapon in the middle of the trouble is joy. Now, I mean, I had the hardest time with this, man. Joy. You know, I remember uh, years ago, uh, Dr. Jerry Savelle preached a message entitled, if, if the enemy can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. It's one of the greatest messages I've ever heard in my life. I mean, wow. Um, but I, I used to struggle with, you know, you know, first of all, how do I count it joy when there's nothing funny? How do I count it joy when I'm in pain? How do I count it joy when I'm in trouble, when I'm in trials when i'm in tribulation and that's when i realized i did not understand what joy was all about and so the next verse says knowing this boy that's big the first two words so he says my brother count it all joy when you fall into different temptations tests and trials well how do i count it joy when i fall in temptations tests and trials? knowing this you got to know something you got to know something praise god 
You got to know what the word says. You got to know the promises of God. You got to know that you're already delivered from the situation. You got to know that you have power over all of the ability of the enemy and nothing will by any means hurt you knowing this. All right. So here he specifically tells us knowing what, what do we need to know that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So specifically what he says here, when you fall into tribulations, testings or trials, know that this trial, uh, this trying of your, this trying of your faith is going to work patience. So devil, you want to come mess with me? All you're going to do is see patience show up because if you mess with me, here's what I know. If you mess with me, I'm going to stay consistently, constantly the same about my faith that you're taking me through a trial and tribulation. In other words, God made a promise that I'm I, by his stripes, I'm healed. And you know what I say to that? I say I'm healed. And so the devil shows up and he declares, well, you know, you're going to die. And you're like, no, I'm healed. Uh, excuse me. I said, no, I'm healed. And he says, you're going to die. No, I'm healed. All right. So here's patience. Patience doesn't mean putting up with something. You're at a red light and you're at the red light. You think, well, I'm going to be patient and just put up with the traffic. No, patience means remaining consistently, constantly the same. All right. You find the promise of God. You get on that promise and you say, you know what? I'm going to stay the same about this. I'm going to remain the same about what God said about my healing. I'm not going to change. And so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stand on that. And, the, and he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And so all of a sudden, I know when a trial comes up, that is an opportunity for me to hire patience. When the trial comes up, that's when I'm definitely not going to change. I'm going to stay rock solid on what God promised me. I'm going to stay rock solid on what his word says. That's what it means, ladies and gentlemen, to be patient. It means to be consistent, to come, to be constant, to be the same about what you're standing on. All right. So what is it that you're standing on? What is, what's the word that you you're believing and you're, you're standing on? He says, when the trial comes, to, to me, that says the devil is trying to stop something that he knows is getting ready to happen. And what you ought to say is what you throw at me, devil, is not changing what I believe. It's not changing my stance. It's not changing um, who God says I am. It's not changing any of that. I'm not going to change. So the joy comes because I know that what you're trying to throw at me is not going to do anything but allow patience to show up. And when patients have a perfect work, I'm going to come out perfect and tired, wanting nothing. So I'm going to get it anyway. Look at what he says in the rest of the scripture. He says, knowing this, that trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her what? Perfect work that you may be perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. I want to read this out of the Amplified. But let endurance, see that? Patience and steadiness. And patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Oh, my God. It's like, dude, are you sure you want to mess with me today? Because when, when you when you decide to mess with me, I am going to let patience have a perfect work. And now I got joy because of what I know. I got joy because of what I know. I know patience is going to begin to work in me. And I know that I'm going to come out perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. And this is so important. And here's the thing we've been learning, that I have the faith of Jesus Christ. I live by the faith of the Son of God. That that's I got perfect faith operating in me. And I tell you what, when my faith is put on trial, glory to God, I'll have enough faith to employ patience and just stay the same about the promise that I'm standing on. And it, you literally just start laughing like the devil. You don't even know what you're doing, do you? You have no idea what is getting ready to come out of this whole situation. 
man, I'm telling y'all, this is what it means to have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength and I'm strengthened when my faith is being tried because I employ, I employ patience when my faith is under trial. Glory to God. And when I employ patience, patience is going to produce the evidence. It's going to produce something perfect or complete. It's going to be entire. And when it's all over with, I'm going to want nothing because I already got what I wanted through the employment of patience. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? So a couple of things I want you to see here, man. Number one, how important it is to know what the word promises. It's important now to get in the word. It's important to get in the word. It's important to, 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 to get in the, to get in those sermons and teachings so you can know something. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge, because of what they don't know. Your joy is going to be limited because of what you don't know. I mean, you don't even know how to stand and thank God for the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his grace. But you know what? God's best is for us to live, go from blessing to blessing. And part of that, ladies and gentlemen, is to not allow our, our ignorance to, to, to be, a, be a destructive force in our lives. I mean, it's in, get in the word, man. Get in the word. Go, go to YouTube and pull up all of those years of teachings. Um, join the Grace Gang in the morning time. Turn to the scripture. Find out where it is. Maybe take some time to memorize some scriptures to get it on the inside of you. Because when the trouble comes, what you have deposited on the inside of you, ladies and gentlemen, is what's going to come out of you. It's what's going to come out of you, man. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you know that by the grace of God, that you have this unrestrained, um, unrestricted love working on your behalf in the first place. Amen. Praise God. But I'm talking about the power of joy. Joy comes from what you know. Are you willing to know some things? What do you know? I also believe it says this. It might be cool to study this in the Greek. I also believe that joy comes from knowing him. Yeah, knowing him. I really believe that. I believe the more you know God, it happens to me, the, the greater my relationship with God uh, gets the, 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 I mean, joy is there. I just know God's not going to let me down. I, I know God's, I know the faith that I have won't let me down I, I, because it's his faith. I, I, I know that patience won't let me down. I just know that whatever's coming to try to test me or try me is, is going to regret it. <laughs> the devil's going to regret it. The demons are going to regret it. They're going to regret it because I'm, I'm not, I don't give up. I don't cave in. I don't quit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me show you an example of trouble coming and how how this guy by the name of Habakkuk uh, handled it. Go to the book of Habakkuk. Um, chapter three. Habakkuk chapter three. And I want you to see how he responded to trouble. Now, somebody say, Abba, who? Just go to go to your table of contents and look up Habakkuk. It's on page 1200 in my Bible, <laughs> table of contents. And look at what happened to Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter three or Habakkuk chapter three. Somebody said, oh, Habakkuk. <laughs> All right, check this out. Verse 17. So here's an actual illustration here. In verse 17, he says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he is my um, he is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singers on my stringed instruments. Now, 
notice something about what's going on with this guy. First of all, his fig trees are not blossoming. All right. His fig trees are not blossoming. Secondly, there's no fruit on the vine. Fig trees are not blossoming and there's no fruit on the vine. Secondly, thirdly, the labor of the olives are failing. I mean, you know, this guy got trouble going on, right? It ain't working, right? All right. The labor of the olives are failing. Um, and the fields are not yielding any meat. Wow. And the flocks are being cut off from the fold. And there's no herd in the stalls. You talking about trouble? You talking about tribulation? I, bro, listen to this. It, it's almost like you're saying, well, my check bounced on me. I ain't got no gas in the car. I don't have a car anymore because it broke. I ain't got no food in the refrigerator. I lost my job. They told me I had cancer. You understand what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about here. Now, what, honestly, what would most people do when this much stuff comes? It's like, basically, you could say about Habakkuk, nothing's working. Nothing working. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation. You've had days where it seemed like nothing's working. All right. Now, how, how you respond? How are you going to respond to this? How are you going to respond to this? What's your response? Is your response going to be, dear God, we'll never make it. Or, oh, Lord, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, God, where is Jesus? Oh, he don't love me. Oh, I must have did something wrong. Oh, well, how are you going to respond? All right. Well, this is what this is what he tells us. He said, yet. He said, and and. and, and and in the middle of all of what's going on, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this works. This works. I remember years ago. Oh, it was uh, 1989. We went to Lagos, Nigeria for about three and a half weeks. And when we got over there, Lagos at this time, uh, I mean, my card, my, my credit cards wouldn't go through nothing. But so we didn't have we didn't have any money to, to pay anything because we our cards all got declined. Not because, you know, something was due. I guess something technical just wasn't working. So we finally got one to go through just for a day. And uh, man, uh, we came after preaching. We were preaching like three or four times a day in all kinds of places, man. So I remember this one night we came and our room was locked. We were locked out of our room. Uh, they were not going to open the door until we came up with another payment. Well, you know, we were we were living off off of whatever books and tapes we sold from from our meetings. And that day did, did wasn't a good day. And so I remember me and Bishop Fuller, we just started dancing in front of the door. We started leaping. We started spinning. We started just praising the Lord right in front of the right in front of the manager. Just started praising God. And the joy of the Lord came because we knew that God is not going to let us down. And I tell you what, that man was moved by the spirit of God. He opened that door. He says, all right, all right, y'all go in there and we'll just. You know, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. And I, I'm telling you, man, it it that guy opened the door for us and allowed us to go in that night because instead of letting anger arise or frustration arise or oh, we, what are we gonna do? Oh no, we let joy arise, and the joy of the Lord became strong in that situation. And we saw this, we saw this, and we spent the 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 rest of that meeting, no matter what we bumped into. The response was the joy of the Lord. Yet will I rejoice. Now, I'm telling you, I know this. I've, I've seen it over and over again. Yet will I rejoice. So you got a lot of stuff that's going to happen to you. Yeah, it's going to come. But yet will I rejoice. Yeah, you, you may be tested today. But yet 
will I rejoice. And I tell you, when you begin to do that, you begin to see the power of God. And look what he says here. He says, um, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. I remember, I remember us saying that the Lord's our strength, praise God. The Lord's our payment. He'll do it, praise God. The Amplified says, the Lord is my strength, my personal bravery, and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hind's feet and will make me to walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk and to make spiritual progress upon high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. I'm telling you, you can make progress in the middle of whatever attack comes your way. How? Through the power of the joy of the Lord. So, hey guys, let's, 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 you know, we, we, we talked this week about, you know, the power of vulnerability, the power of gratitude and thanksgiving, the power of the joy of the Lord. Power is the ability to get results. That's what power is. It is the ability to get results. And, and he said, I think Luke 10, 19, Luke 10, 19, I give unto you power to trade over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will by in any means hurt you. Praise God. There you go. So the devil better seriously chill. He, he come towards you today. Your, your response needs to be, uh-uh, uh not today, bro. You better go ask somebody. You better go ask somebody. I have been fueled up today. You better go check with somebody now. You, I'll shout a thousand hallelujahs on you. I'll put my favorite song on and let the joy of the Lord come in. You better watch out. Don't mess with me today. Don't mess with me. You better go ask one of them demons. Don't mess with me. I'm telling you, man, I'm excited about us knowing how to walk in authority, praise the Lord, and how to use uh, what God has given us and to stand on this amazing, awesome gift and strength of God's faith. And I'm telling you, yeah, you want to come try this thing? Do so. But I know some stuff and I'm going to let patience have a perfect work. And so what are you believing for today? What are you what are you standing on for today? What's your hope for today? Well, just keep 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 believing it. Don't don't let what happens stop you from believing, stop you from receiving, stop you from resting and what uh, what God has promised and what God said would be done. The devil is already a defeated foe. He just don't want you to know it. And I'm letting you know right now, he's already been whipped. He has already been whooped. Amen. And so you take a deep breath, man, and you get back on the horse. Take a deep breath and you get back on the horse and you tell yourself, it, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I like what in the book of Micah, he says this, when I fall, I shall arise. Amen. So get up, get up, keep it moving. You don't have time to be sobbing. Get up, keep it moving and let that devil know, bruh, I'm a son of the almighty God. Don't you mess with me. Don't mess with me. I am, Listen, I'm not the one. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm telling you right now, I'm not the one. <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm college Paul. I'm not the one, bro. I'm not the one. You better, you better go do something. I'm not the one. Well, I, I know judo, bro. I'm telling you something. I know Jesus. I'm, I'm from college Paul, and and I know Jesus. I'm not the one. Okay, so y'all need to go on somewhere else for somebody that, that that don't know this. Amen. Because I'm telling you, man, greater is He that is on the inside of us than He that is in the world. I just sense you're gonna have a a mighty weekend today. And I also know the enemy is going, going to come at you with, with everything he can. And that's all right. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And nothing will by any means hurt you. All is well. I love that, Sonia. I am echoing the promises of God. That's what he says. In the middle of, the, uh, of a situation, we ought to be echoing the promises of God. Amen. Hey, I love y'all so much. Have a wonderful day. I am. 
I'm gonna have a wonderful day today. Praise God, praise God. And uh, when you when you when you get offline today, shout with a voice of triumph, man. Thank you, Grace Gang. Y'all have a great weekend. Sunday's gonna be amazing. So join us for Sunday service. It's gonna be amazing, amazing, amazing. We continue the series on true faith, and it's gonna bless your life forever. Thank y'all so much for this week. Uh, I look forward to spending more time with you guys. Have an amazing day. Somebody said have a fantabulous day.